I'm Ben. I'm a recovering uh, bulimic and compulsive overeater. And I weigh and measure three meals a day off the gray sheet. And I write them down. And I commit them to my sponsor, another qualified gray sheeter. I don't eat in between meals. And, and, uh, it's the most important thing I do, without a doubt, every day, no matter what. This is actually my celebration from April 22nd. So I don't go to many gray sheet meetings. This is the one when I pop in. This is the one that I go to um, on April 22nd of this year was 28 years of back-to-back -back abstinence. And uh, I contacted to, to speak and this was the next date on the calendar. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so it really just doesn't, uh, it, I really, I'm afraid of being misinterpreted. Um, it really doesn't matter. Like April 22nd is another day. I'm grateful like you can't imagine for 28 years of back-to-back -back abstinence. It was hard won. I struggled from the time I was 15 until I finally got this at the age of 34. The people in New York watched me. You know, I could go to three meetings a day, which I ended up having to do in order to get this program and they watched me i had 11 months of abstinence and i decided to have an extra fruit at lunch and went out for six more months and that six months was the hardest thing i've ever put myself through and that's the odd thing i understand powerlessness you know in my cells i've been in aa since 87 i've been in da since 93 i've been I, you know, I mean, I just, my whole phone, every phone number in my phone has probably some connection to a 12 step program. Uh, and it's, I would love to talk about gray sheet as this magical recovery addiction thing. But the truth is the underlying malady is an energy. It's a spiritual energy that I take in things that are meant to nourish me and meant to do well for me. And I want to expel them and get rid of them as quickly as I take them in. And that's true of relationships. And that's true of without an intervention by a higher power. It's true of relationships. It's true of money. It's true of food. Um, the way my disease manifests is that thing of this is meant to provide love and nourishment to you. And I, on some cellular level, don't want any part of it. So I get rid of it as quickly as I take it in. So once I got to that by doing the steps over and over and over again, once I realized, oh, it's not about the food. And we know here it is about the food because we do have a physical allergy. But in terms of my brain recovery, in terms of my mental illness recovery, it's not about the food. It's about believing I'm not worthy of nourishment. Uh, I woke up today extraordinarily early, so early that I already went back to bed and had an hour 15 nap. I couldn't sleep and I woke up thinking about man. Um, so I sat down. The way it all happened, I don't know, uh, whatever, if it's useful to talk about this, but I saw a, a, I saw a TikTok thing, a social media thing in which Paul McCartney was talking about the last four hours he sat next to George Harrison's bed and just held George Harrison's hand. And in that process, he thought, oh, George is probably going to push my hand away because blokes from Liverpool don't hold hands with other blokes. And he said, 
but George never pushed my hand away. He just held my hand and it was okay. And he said, I realize this is life. And I have a thing that will be with me till the day I die. I can't think about the Beatles without thinking of Nan because Nan was the biggest Beatle fan of anyone I have ever known. So anyway, that's she's in my head today and I woke up that way. Um, I guess the magic of putting the food down, putting the food on the scale is you actually get to feel these things that you were avoiding feeling all your life. But the grief around man is that sardonic, that sort of glisten, glistening eye, like, you know, the sort of internal eye roll. And if you knew her well, you could see it. And you could like, you could, you know, you could kind of read the physical signs and know what she was thinking. And I miss that, you know, like if I could do anything, I would call her up and just listen to, a little bit of a little bit of sardonic humor, a little bit of sarcasm, maybe. Um, and it's nice to miss her. I got to tell you, it's so nice to have loved someone that I was sponsoring and looked forward to talking to every day. It's nice to have that. Uh, it's not true of all sponsees. <laughs> um, my food disease, my mom was a home economics instructor in Pender, Nebraska. So the woman knew how to garden and she knew how to cook and she knew how to sew. She dearly loved being a mom. I think she wanted other things, bigger things. And I think because of growing up in the 40s and 50s, uh, she kind of went in the direction that she went. But that doesn't diminish the fact that she loved it. And you could tell that she loved it. She loved feeding us. Dear God, she loved feeding us. And she cooked with so much sugar. <laughs> and I miss, uh, and my father comes from a family of obese people. My father's family, um, they all died of heart disease or kidney disease. His brothers and sisters all were like 100 to 150 pounds overweight when they died. So it was kind of an interesting mix. The fabulous cook that my mother was and the DNA that my father had. Uh, but I just, you know, they also gave me incredible things. My father pulled me aside once and he said, well, Ben, if I do my job right, at some point you're going to tell me to mind my own business. And it's a lovely thing to be raised with that. It's a lovely thing to know that the day you tell your father off, he's going to feel good about being your father. Uh, and it's a lovely thing to have my mother's spirit. I am my mother's son through and through, and she had this indomitable spirit. So the bulimia started mainly around, um, you know, the allergy started at four. And I knew I was a, I, I knew I've had some, I didn't have words for any of this, but I knew I was gay once, once I understood the sexuality of it in my teens. But the sensitivity, I didn't have any words for. Like, I, I feel like I was born without a shell. And I also feel like my spirit is about twice as big as my body. So I've always felt like I wanted to bust out. And uh, so sort of taming the spirit, like the scale actually helps me, me contain the spirit around food. Um, But that thing of my spirit feeling about twice as big as my body, my container, I was sharing that actually. When Nan died, I was talking to Nan's daughter and she goes, oh, that's a great description of my mom. And she really appreciated that I was able to put it into words for myself. 
but she sort of co-opted it as a as a way of navigating her own feelings uh my last binge i always you know I did what you all did. Like I went through the garbage can after birthday parties to eat the leftover stuff. Uh, I waited until people left and then I ate what was left on their brunch. My favorite foods are all the foods that are made and served before 11 o'clock in the morning generally. You know, like all the the boxed stuff. Uh, anyway, the last binge. And I had so many binges. I could tell you stories. Um, I think drinking was just a vehicle to eat more <laughs> or sometimes I stopped, stopped. Sometimes I wouldn't drink because I just wanted to eat more uh, and wandering up and down the streets of New York City. Uh, from deli to deli, bakery to bakery. Um, but there are, I told this story many, many, many times. Um, there was a del, a little corner bodega, dark. It was not well painted and it was needed a new air conditioner or some ventilation. <clears throat> but I spent like $8 on junk food in cellophane wrappers made out of sugar by the Hostess Corporation. Put it on the counter, went back to my apartment, binged and purged it, went back a second time, spent the same amount of money, went back to my apartment, binged it and purged it, came back a third time, put all the junk on the counter a third time and this lovely man. And the only reason it matters that he was from a different country is because English clearly was not his first language, but he looked me very softly in the eyes and he said, Hey buddy, are you okay? And I was mortified and gratified and thrilled at being seen at the same time. I was just embarrassed, uh, but it was enough. It was enough. For some reason, at that, it was the cosmic tumblers clicking into place so that I was willing to stop everything. Everything in my life stopped for about nine or ten months, except making enough money to buy food. And if I chose to cancel on you, I called you and I said, hey, uh, back in the days when we had landlines, uh, I would call you and I would just say, I'm sorry, I can't do it. And I would cancel going to movies or going out to dinner or whatever. Uh, the power of the work, though, once you put your food on the scale, the thing I'm most grateful for is eventually, and it took years, took till 2012, for my trauma, drama, anxiety, internal revving engine to stop, to slow down like the hamster on the wheel analogy that we use here. It took till 2012, I was recovering from a really bad relationship and I sat still for extended periods of time and I started meditating for between 30 and 45 minutes every day. And eventually that whole internal, gotta do this, gotta do that, gotta da 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 it all, quieted down and now I have a much different sense of myself and I'm so grateful my sense of self is not dictated by an external some sort of imagined external uh, person place or thing what a freaking relief that is not that I don't have moments of it of course I'm human but in general it's what I do is I do the vertical check in first with my higher power. And then I have to run my brilliant ideas that I get in meditation. I have to run them by one or two people on the planet level because I'll take a brilliant idea and I'll ask these, you know, like I, I always run these brilliant ideas that I get in meditation by two people. And, you know, they'll say, yeah, maybe not. Maybe that's a little bit of diseased thwarted ego that wants to live the old way so that's enough out of me five seconds to remain thank you everybody